Welcome to another episode of Kenny's Cantina, Eating in Style on the Road. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're finding my website helpful in the RV kitchen and you're enjoying the recipes. Before we get started, I wanted to point out that I'm recording the show at different RV parks around the country. Sometimes the Wi-Fi and cell coverage can be a little shaky. This may impact the audio track from time to time. So should an episode have some glitches, understand that when you're on the road, some technical difficulties can occur. Also, depending on internet coverage, sometimes there's a lag as to when I can upload shows. Thanks for your understanding in this. Today, we're gonna make my ever popular guacamole. This is a party pleaser dish that is a great appetizer as well as a compliment to other dishes. It's perfect for those potlucks at the RV park. Instead of a side, bring an appetizer. Guacamole is a fresh avocado dip and condiment that's easy to make. It's quick, simple, and so delicious. My recipe gives you some tricks to make your guacamole pop and stay fresh longer. It's one of my most requested dishes among my friends. I was in Alaska a couple of years ago. They had all the items to make guacamole, but she was tired of fixing food and was gonna skip it. I stepped in and offered to make it and it was a big hit. A few days later, I was invited back and I asked, what can I bring? Her quick response was guacamole. Friends have been asking me to do an episode on guacamole, so here goes. By popular demand, Kenny's guacamole. The prep time on the dish is going to be about 10 minutes. This will serve four to six people. You can store it for two or three days in the refrigerator. Don't freeze it. It, it won't keep well. For the ingredients for this, you're going to need four small ripe avocados, one cup uh, chopped sweet onions. That's about a half a sweet onion. One cup chopped Roma tomato. It's about two Roma tomatoes, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of white pepper, a teaspoon of cumin, a tablespoon of minced garlic, half a lime that we'll squeeze, and a quarter cup of chopped cilantro, which is optional. So let's start making some guacamole. So for this dish, you want to use ripe avocados for the guacamole. The first step I'm going to do is I'm going to slice those avocados in half. Kind of bring my knife down and kind of twirl the avocado around it. A quick word of caution when cutting avocados, be careful. I did some research and since 2013, there have been 27,059 avocado related knife injuries. One article stated that 24 people go to the ER each day from cutting avocados. So do be careful. Let me finish cutting, slicing these in half. Okay, peeling back. So you'll have one half with the pit in it. And what I do is I gently take a, my knife and tap it onto the pit. And then I twist that and it'll pop right out. So then I put my knife on the edge of my cutting board to kind of get the pit off of there. And I'm gonna save those for later. So let me get the rest of these. All right, so I've got my pits to the side. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is I like to dice my avocado in the skins. Now here again, you wanna be careful with this. So I put the avocado, cup it in my hand and lightly push my knife down lengthways. Make about three, four slices across. And then I'm gonna turn the avocado and come the other way through it. And this is going to give us some nice chunks. So let me get these others done. It's pretty simple to do. Like I said, you just want to be careful that you don't chop through the skin with this. All right. So next I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spoon and take the avocado and I'm going to run that spoon around the edge over my mixing bowl and pop out those wedges into the mixing bowl. The whole thing is I like my guacamole chunky, so I'm gonna be careful with these uh, dices so I can keep them whole. All right, so we've got that set. 
So be sure do not mash your avocados. Keep them keep them in chunks. The next step is to we're going to dice up our onion. So about a half a sweet onion. Let me get this dice. Pick up my cutting board. Let me slide those in. And then I'm going to take a spatula and I'm going to slowly mix this in. Sometimes I use a fork, but just be careful to do this gently so you don't squish the avocados. Okay, that's kind of mixed up. Let's do our tomatoes now. The two Roma tomatoes, I'm going to slice down them and then come back and chop. And let's add that in. And once again, I'm going to mix that up. Do it slowly and gently. All right. Next thing is time to start adding some spices. We're going to start with the salt. Pour my salt in. I'm going to spread that around. And then I'm going to mix again gently. So you'll find after I add each spice, I gently mix it in. What I'm trying to do is spread those spice flavors throughout the guacamole. If, if you put them all in at one time, they'll be kind of clumped together and you're not going to get even around it. So next is the white pepper. Put that in. And gently mix. Okay. The cumin. And some of that. I love the smell of cumin. I use it a lot in a lot of dishes. Okay, let me get that mixed. And now it's time for the minced garlic. Tablespoon of that in. The garlic gives this a really nice flavor. All right, so I still have chunks and all in this with all the spices added. Uh, the next step is to squeeze a lime. Let me cut a lime in half. And I like to use a a little squeezer, you just put the lime in there and squeeze down on that. Fresh lime juice is going to add a lot to this dish. And let's mix that one more time. All right. Now our last ingredient we're going to put in here is the cilantro. So I'm just going to cut some off the end of my bunch of cilantro. And then I'm going to chop that up. About a quarter cup. You add that, and I'm going to slowly mix this in. Now the cilantro is optional. Some people don't like it, or they're allergic. So ask your guests, or for a potluck at the RV park, just leave it out. That way you don't have to worry about it. All right. So that's all mixed up, smelling great. Let's do a taste here. Hmm. That guacamole has a great fresh flavor. The avocado chunks, the onions, and tomatoes give you a great texture with a burst of the flavors of each ingredient. Mm, that's good. I'm, I'm going to enjoy this. Now, for the freshness secret that I hinted at, place avocado pits. Remember, we set those to the side. So place those on top of the guacamole, and I'm going to push those down into the guacamole. This will help keep it green. The squeezed lime juice also contributes to helping to keep, keep that green. Now, to serve this, you can serve this with tortilla chips out as an appetizer and enjoy it. So your guests will love it. So moving on to our tips, you want to use ripe avocados with this dish. The avocados should be black yet semi-firm. If you push the top of the stem into the avocado, how easy that goes in, you can kind of tell the ripeness. If you push on it and it doesn't go in, that's not a ripe avocado. So that stem should gently push into the avocado. If the avocado feels overly soft on the inside, on, when you, when you kind of lightly squeeze it, then that's overripe and on the inside it'll be discolored. So check out your avocados and try to get the ripest ones you can find. Now, when dicing the avocado and skin like I do, be careful not to cut through the skin in your hand. If the avocado is underripe and hard, dice it in skin, 
as you'd have to apply way too much pressure and you might be cut. And I don't want you to be one of those avocado injury statistics. Now, the size of avocados vary. I'm using four small avocados for this batch. If the market you go to has large avocados, then use two instead of the four. And if you don't have Roma tomatoes or you don't find them in the store, you can use any other variety of tomato. Just measure out the quantity when you chop it up. I used white pe pepper for this dish. You can use black pepper. The only thing with black pepper is the color of the black pepper may darken the guacamole a bit and it might not be as bright as uh, I would like, but the black pepper will taste fine. As I mentioned, cilantro is optional in this recipe. You can also substitute from dried cilantro or cilantro paste in place of the fresh cilantro if you don't have it on handy. I always keep some of both of those on hand. Now, placing the avocado pits in the guacamole will help preserve the freshness and color of the guacamole. The lime juice helps as well. I did some research on putting the pits in the guacamole, and the reason it helps is that it reduces the surface exposed to the air, and then the lime works chemically to help preserve the guacamole. Now, you can store this for two or three days in a sealed container if, with the pits in it. That'll help keep it fresh. The guacamole will stay green, but it won't taste quite as fresh as that freshly made. It will still taste good, it just won't be quite as fresh. And the storage container I use for my avocado has a vent top, and I use that to get as much of the air out as I can, and that helps to keep it fresh. And, and like I mentioned earlier, don't freeze this, it, it won't work well. Enjoy it while it's fresh. Now guacamole is also not just for dipping. Typically, we think of it as an appetizer, but it can also be great on a turkey sandwich, on toast with cream cheese, making an avocado cream cheese toast, or on a tostada. So be creative with how you use it. And when you're enjoying your guacamole, I have a great cocktail I created that complements it, a Chihuahua cocktail. Check out episode 12, which I'm going to post at the same time. You're going to love this drink. Now let's get to Kenny's Q&A time. My last episode was on a curry chicken salad, and it generated some great questions. I appreciate your comments and questions. The Q&A portion of the show has become quite popular, and I love the research and thought process that goes into my answers to your questions. I'm all about sharing and exploring new ideas, and your questions get me hitting the books and getting my creative juices going. My show is being broadcast around the world, and it's always exciting to get questions and comments from the far reaches. Thanks for listening, wherever you might be in this wide world. For this question and answer time, I recreated the curry chicken salad six different ways based on your questions. So thanks for your questions and comments. Let's get to the mail. George from Michigan asks, can I use canned chicken for your curry chicken dish? And do I have to drain the water content out or not? Canned chicken is something that a lot of our viewers have in their pantries and the convenience of having a protein without needing refrigeration is a plus when boondocking. I made a batch of the curry chicken salad with canned chicken and I did drain the water out of the can. The salad came out great. The major difference is that it does not have the chunks of chicken. The consistency was more like a tuna salad, but it tasted the same as my original recipe. So George, go ahead and use canned chicken. Thanks for the question. Cammy from Kentucky asks, can I use leftover fried chicken like something from KFC or Popeyes in your curry salad dish, or would the fried flavors mix and be too much? This is a good question and a good use to leftovers. When using leftover fried chicken, remove the fried skin and take off the bone, then chop up the chicken. Comes out great. Thanks for the question, Tammy. Judy from Texas asks, can I use tuna as a substitute instead of chicken? Judy, this is a very interesting question. I opened up a can of tuna and prepared a curry tuna salad. This one, did not turn out that well. It was somewhat fishy, 
and it did not have that good taste profile with the spices. So sorry, Judy, stick to the chicken for this dish. Thanks for your question. Our next question is from Gabriela in Brazil. If I were to add grated cheese to your dish as an added topping, what cheese would you recommend? This is a good question. My cheese suggestion is to crumble queso fresco, the Mexican crumbly cheese on top. This cheese is similar to an Indian paneer, but it's a lot easier to find in the store. I put some on top and it worked well. So thanks Gabriella for the question and watching from the Southern Hemisphere. Now Darcy from all over asks, Kenny, we are also full-time travelers. Can your curry chicken salad be served warm or does it have to be a cold dish? I wanted to make sandwiches out of it. Darcy, I hope you enjoy full timing as much as I do. So I heated up a batch of some of your of the curry chicken salad and it was great warm. The hot curry chicken salad would make a great main dish for an evening meal as well. The taste of the spices really pop. Thanks, Darcy, and enjoy the road. Nancy from Hawaii asks, how do you think this would work with soft cream cheese instead of mayo as a dip rather than a salad? A dip was something I had been considering, so Nancy spawned me on to give it a try. For a dip, I suggest either using canned chicken or chopping the chicken into finer pieces so it dips better without the big chunks of meat. When I made it, I did find out that you need to add half again the amount of spices. The cream cheese seemed to overpower some of the spices without adding extra. Thanks, Nancy, for the suggestion. It is a tasty dip. Just a couple quick last questions to wrap up our Q&A. Mariana from Argentina asks, what can I use instead of mayo in your dish? You stated that yogurt wasn't as good as mayo, so what else do you suggest? I'm not a mayo fan. Mariana, the yogurt version was good. It's just that my tasters preferred the mayo version. Go ahead and make it with the yogurt and enjoy. Thanks for letting me clarify. Betty from New York asks, Kenny, is it okay to freeze your chicken salad? Well, Betty, I don't re recommend freezing the salad as, it, as it'll get watery when you thaw it out and lose some of that flavor, so thanks. And finally, Eleanor from Peru asks, I'm thinking of adding nuts and grapes to your recipe. What are your thoughts? Thinking it will be too much or would it take the recipe tastes away? There are some curry chicken salad recipes out there that, that are made with nuts and grapes, but I think for my recipe and the ingredients I use, it would change up the flavor too much. So just keep it the way it is. So thanks for your question, Eleanor. I wanna thank all my viewers and fans who take the time to cook with me and who are out of their busy day to drop me a note with a question or a comment. The show is getting very popular with several thousand viewers for each show and some shows reaching tens of thousands. So thank you. You enjoying the show is what it's all about and I appreciate your viewing. Be sure also to watch episode 12, my Chihuahua cocktail to compliment your guacamole. On another note, I wanna mention mingle with your RV neighbors. Meeting new people is half the fun and you never know who you might run into. Recently in a campground, I became friends and cooked with some very interesting neighbors. There were some actors in town for various shoots that were social distancing in their RV. My cooking was a great way to become fast friends. Dean Norris of Breaking Bad and Claws was a great guy and dinner guest, and he was nice enough to give me a shout out on his Instagram and Twitter at Dean J. Norris. J.T. Campos, who plays Boaz on Queen of the South, and I did a socially distanced cooking show live on his Instagram, at J.T. Campos One. That was a blast. And finally, up and coming actor Keisha Sierra and her husband Brian became friends, and we shared several meals together. She even cooked me a Belizean pork stew. Her husband videoed the cooking, and it'll be a future episode on Kenny's Cantina. You can get a sneak peek on her Instagram, at Keisha Sierra. So get out there and meet your neighbors. 
We're all RVers and have similar interests. Look for me at a campground near you and drop by to say hey. You might even get to taste one of my dishes. So stay tuned for the next Kenny's Cantina Eating in Style on the Road. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, previous shows and recipes can be found on my website. You can also find Kenny's Cantina on Facebook, where I post additional pictures of what I'm cooking and what I'm doing in my travels. So like my page to stay up to date between podcasts. You can also follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Kenny's Cantina wouldn't be possible without the help of my sponsors, IBC Productions and the Roadhogs Media Network. So a big thanks to them. See you all on the road.